This is part two of the Sonar Key Switch Map demo. And here's the uh, piano roll view now in the group of key switches. I'm going to select the 18 violins key switches. And over here in the list of articulations, you can right click and that will, uh, you can get the drum map manager there. I'm going to open that. And you see, um, creating these is actually rather painstaking. The, the UI that uh, Sonar has is really due for an overhaul. But in any case, the columns here you're looking at, these are the um, note names. Now in, in Sonar, um, note 24 is C0. The names, are, I've typed all these in manually, so the sustained vibrato and all the others there you can see. Um, the output channel is assigned to channel 1, which is the channel where the 18 violin instrument lives on um, within play. And the output port is the MIDI input of the um, east-west string 1 VST. The velocity doesn't really matter for key switches, it only triggers on a, uh, a note on. So I set that to 0 and that's fine. Um, so you can uh, look through down the rest of the articulation list. Oh yeah, I set the um, round robin reset to MIDI note zero I showed you earlier. Um, so you can configure that to be a, a, a controller or a MIDI note, and I set it to MIDI note zero. So that's about it, uh, really. For the drum map manager, you can see all the articulations and, and the order that they appear in play, um, and I've laid them out in the same order. So, um, I, uh, and I laid them out also in um, in the piano roll view here, so you can drag and move these up and down um, from within the, the uh, piano roll view when you see that in parallel there with the, the MIDI keyboard in the piano uh, roll view. There's the drum maps up on top. I, I set the active articulations to solo, and the ones that are not active, that are not loaded in memory, I set those to mute, and that's really just more of a, um, a landmark to me to help me see which ones I know that are available. Um, but you can do an A-B comparison by muting and soloing each of them individually. So um, the round robin reset is another landmark just with, I, I put those equal signs in there just kind of as a demarcation um, between the, uh, the ones that are loaded and ones aren't. So over here, uh, you can actually click through or arrow up and down between the key switches and you can see them all change depending on which key switch MIDI track I've selected. And you can just look down at the actual MIDI uh, note data down there too. So I'm going to select uh, let's see, let me go back to the track view and select the 11 violins both the key switch and the uh, note data uh, pair. So you get a lot less clutter that way if you have just those on screen at once instead of all of them. Um, don't need the MIDI controller laying there. So another important thing is to solo them. If you have a lot of MIDI data, you don't want to send it all at once to your speakers because um, unless you're really stressing your system, which is kind of fun to do to see what y what your system can handle. but. Um, but just solo the ones you're working on, you'll be a lot happier. So you can hear there, that's uh, that's really not a very musical selection, but I created this just to demonstrate the key switches. And uh, that was, you know, with the, uh, the legato um, articulation there is that key switch I have and you can see the notes overlapping for the articulation the uh, legato script and the non overlapping notes give you more of an attack um, so like I said it's not really a musical selection uh, I have uh, have a trill some uh, whole tone and half tone trills a little bit of um, the sustained vibrato also here uh, notice the round robin reset is is important for the um, the marcato uh, Martellet pairing because it's a down bow and an up bow, especially on these three note and four note phrases, because you want the down bow to come at the beginning of each, or at least that's how this was intended. So if you get an up bow on one and a down bow on the other, it sounds um, kind of sloppy. So the round robin reset, make sure you get the, the bowing um, as you would want it 
That's how it's supposed to be. Mute the round robin reset again. So you can hear the down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, which is not how it was intended uh, without the round robin reset. Um, so I can move some more of these uh, key switches up and down, do the trills. And let's make that whole tone into a half tone trill. And then half tone into a whole tone trill. So you can just drag these around. It's, it's really easy to do. You can see you can uh, change those articulations or you can add uh, ones that aren't included in the default um, set of articulations, the ones that I had loaded in, uh, in the EWI um, instruments. So let's select down here the Colenio um, from the strings. You can see in the uh, VST, it's uh, down here, Colenio. It's not activated, was well, activated. It loads into memory, and um, so I can take that now and drag it up into the activated group. You don't have to do this, but it just puts everything together in one group. So the Colenio is especially noticeable for the round robin reset. and. Um, if you don't have it right, you really know. So that's with a round robin reset. Here's without. And that's a pretty obvious difference. Here's with it again. So let's switch back to the track view. I'll show you the rest of the template here. So um, it's pretty much uh, it's pretty similar to to how the strings are laid out. The winds are on the top. Uh, I have some extras, and there are some woodwinds. Um, of different instruments, some Hollywood winds, which are actually networked in from uh, Vienna Pro Ensemble on a different machine. Uh, some other contact stuff as well um, is on the other machine. Um, and I have uh, a bunch of things hidden just to keep things um, a little cleaner and easier to, to find my way around in. So there it is, and good luck using key switch maps.